It's been just over a year since I last made a video on UV and when I recorded that video it had been out I think less than 24 hours. At the time it didn't have a great deal going for it, it was basically just pip but a bit faster and with less features, but it promised the world. Quite literally, really. There were plans to make it the everything package manager, the one de facto standard that everyone was going to use and replace literally everything else. And a year on, it looks as though it might have actually done that. In this video, we are going to look at what UV is, what it can do, what it can't do. And there are a few things it can't do, and we will talk about those. They're quite minor, though. And ultimately, if you're still using something like Pip or Poetry, whether it's worth upgrading. I've been looking to upgrade my skill set actually. I've been doing so using this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes led by industry experts in DIY, animation, film, and more. If you're not sure which class to take, consider going down a learning path instead. Learning paths curate multiple classes on a topic together, making it easier to find classes that suit your needs. They also give a broader idea of the topic, including things you might not have even thought of. I myself have been wanting to get better with editing, especially all those fancy animations you see around the place. To help with that, I've been taking the Visual Effects with Fusion class by Marcel Patillo, part of a learning path all about DaVinci Resolve. The class focuses on introducing you to Fusion and its nose structure by creating a relatively simple title graphic. The one on screen right now is a simple one I made using my logo, and I think it's pretty cool. I don't think the channel is really in need of a title graphic, but it has inspired me to go and play around with more complicated animations that I could include in future videos. The first 500 people to use my link in the description get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So if you've been thinking about upgrading anything about you, you now have one more reason to do so. Have a look, it might just be exactly what you've been looking for. Now you've all gone and done that, let's take a look at UV and see where it's come in the last year. This video will be split up into three sections. The first will be a bit of a crash course into project management with this thing. The second will be a few benchmarks. So we're going to be comparing it to PyM for installing Python versions and Poetry for installing dependencies. And then I'm just going to go over some extra bits and pieces that I find interesting about UV with some final opinions and all that. Before we get into that, I do want to talk very quickly about installing UV. If you're on macOS like I am, you can do brew install UV just fine and that will work. I imagine, I haven't verified this, but I imagine it will work for Linux Python, or sorry, Linux package managers as well. If not, there is an install script that should work for everyone that is on the, the UV website that I'll link in the description. So if something's not working for you, you can just go down there and install it from there. Once you have it installed, you have the UV command available to you. There is a lot of commands uh, and a lot of flags, as you can see. I'm gonna be going over some of the highlights as I see them because if I went over everything, I'd be here for a very long time. But there is a lot to go over, so I would recommend experimenting in your own time. The first thing you might want to do once UV is installed is install some Python versions, similar to how you would do in PyEnv. Now, UV can use system install Python versions if you prefer, and you can actually manage whether it's allowed to do that or not. But to install Python versions is pretty simple. All you need to do is UV Python install and then a list of all the versions you want to install. So let's say 3.12, 3.13 and 3.14, which is the version currently in development. I'm going to use the time command at the start of this because this is going to be one half of the benchmark against PyEnv um, because there's no point in running that again. When we run that, you'll see that it actually installs them all concurrently at the same time. And we get a final total uh, time of about 1.8 seconds or about 1.9 seconds which is very quick to install three versions of Python. And a bit of a spoiler alert, that is significantly faster than what PyEnv can do. Once you've installed the versions of Python you want, you might want to create a brand new project and UV has a command in it that allows you to do that. This was borrowed from Rai. Those of you that have used it, it's I think the same command. Rai was subsumed into UV. But you can use UV in it and then you can give it a directory name, say test, and it will create a project Cool test in the test directory. If we look at the files, we see it's got a version control system. We've got the .python version file, a readme.py, a main.py, and a pyproject.toml. You can configure certain bits and pieces. Um, so you could, if you wanted to, let's not do that, have a second one. And then you can pass the double dash lib, which changes the directory structure if you're creating a Python library. Uh, you can also set the minimum supported Python version. So we're going to set 3.10. I think by default, it's the latest one you have installed. I could be wrong about that. And you can also set a description to whatever you want. I'm just going to call this a test. Well, I guess it's a test library, not a package, isn't it? 
alongside a whole host of other flags. There's all sorts of things about whether or not you want a VCS or not. I'm not going to go into those because, again, I'll be here forever. But if you do that, go into it, and then we load it in Visual Studio Code, we can see exactly what's in it. So we have this git ignore, we have the readme.md, we have this source file, and this is the only thing I don't like about UV, the fact that it forces this source on you. I don't like this way of doing things. I know it's popular in, well, it's the only way to do it in Rust. So, you know, influencers and whatever, but you could just move this out if you don't want it. You have this dunder init.py, which just has a simple uh, function. And then you also have this py.typed file, which is useful if you want to do strongly typed code. If you don't want to do strongly typed code, you can just get rid of this file and you'll be fine. The main file we're going to be looking at though is this pyproject.toml file, which has our name, our version, our description, our readme, the author information, uh, the requires Python, uh, which is just our minimum version of Python, and our dependencies, which is what we're going to be spending most of the rest of the video looking at. So if you prefer, you can add dependencies directly into here. We'll talk about how to do that in later, but you can also add them via the command line, much like you would do in other uh, package managers with Python. If you wanted to add a dependency, you would use uv add and then the name of the package to so say URL lib3. You can add as many as you want. By default, it will install the latest uh, version, so 2.3.0, and it will also pin, well, not really pin, but it will say, well, it will add a constraint that only versions 2.3.0 or greater should be part of the project. Uh, but of course you can change that to your own liking. The first time you install something, it will also self install the package just so you have it available for you in your environment. If you don't want that library anymore, you can just UV remove URL lib3 and it gets rid of it. If you want to install a specific version of it, you can provide a constraint manually like this. And now it will pin version 2.0.0 as I've specified here. If you ever wanted to change that dependency, if there was ever an update or something, then you could just specify UV add the package name and then the new constraint, and it will replace the already existing constraint. So we, you notice we didn't have to uninstall it, it uninstalled itself and then installed the new version for us. You can also add dependencies, add development dependencies, much like you can do in poetry by using UV add and then passing the double dash dev flag. And if you pass black in here, we can install black and that appears in this uh, dev dependency group down here. And once we have that, we can run it using UV run and then we can pass black dot. And now it will format all of our Python code, which it's done successfully. Once you have a few dependencies installed, you might be interested in seeing what's actually present. And you can do that using UV tree, which unlike pip list provides a, a tree of what is installed by what. So we can see that URL lib3 and black are dependencies of Carbara, black in group dev. And we can see that all these libraries are dependencies of black. So we know exactly how click got installed. We know exactly how Tomlee got installed. And if we remove black now, we can use UV remove black. We'll get an error because black is in the development group and it doesn't let us do that um, unless it's in the normal group. So we can just specify a uh, group dev just to, to tell it it wants to be there. And it will also remove every package that isn't being used by anything else, which is something that pip doesn't do and something that's really nice. You can also add dependencies to your own custom groups. So we can do UV add, say, PyTest. And if we wanted this to be in a test group, we can just specify double dash group test. And it appears in this group here. If you ever want to control what dependencies are installed in the environment at any given time, the UV sync command is your friend. So you can use UV sync now, and it will uninstall all these things because it will default back to the normal group or the normal environment without any depend. Well, it has this dependency, but it doesn't have the PyTest dependency. If you wanted to reinstall the PyTest dependency into our group um, or into our environment, we can use UV sync double dash group test, and it will now synchronize all of our test dependencies as well. The UV sync command is also really useful if you're adding or modifying dependencies manually. So we can change this to say 7.0 and then less than 8.0 if we wanted to constrain ourselves to the, the 7.x series of PyTest. And if we run this UV sync command again, it will now read that and see, oh, I need to uninstall PyTest 8 and install the latest version that fits into this uh, constraint, which is 7.4.4. That's how you can do things manually if you prefer to do that. UV is also capable of reading uh, requirements.txt files as well and adding them into your pyproject.toml. So if you're worried about that, you don't have to be. This is an example 
of uh, a requirements file from a real world project. It has all these environment markers and everything. And to add all this, all you need to do is uv add r requirements.txt. And I'm actually going to add it to a separate group just so it's not interfering. And it goes through and it can't do that. Oh yeah, because I need to um, I need to remove this test group to get rid of that. And then if I, that should be fine. There we go. Yeah, it does all sorts of dependency checks as well to make sure I did that intentionally, trust me. But you can now see it's installed all of these things here and it's added them into our Py project. Our Tom Olson are now available here. You'll notice as well that this Python full version is not the same as, whoops, this Python version here. It changes environment markers to match the syntax of the file, so you don't need to worry about that. UV also has a really nice system around scripts. So this is a script that I borrowed from the same project I borrowed that requirements.txt file for. Basically, it just generates a JWK and, and does some things with JWTs. It was a testing script when I was implementing that in that project. Uh, you can add it as a dependency using uv uh, add double dash script. There we go. <laughs> Typing all the wrong things there. And now we just put, um, so the first argument to that will be our script itself. And then any subsequent arguments will be requirements that that script needs. So we need uh, JW crypto and we need JWT as well. And when we add this, it will update our script um, to say that it requires a certain version of Python. It requires certain dependencies. If we then use UV run to run that script, it will then install these dependencies in an isolated virtual environment and then run the script, meaning that you can run scripts without having to install things in weird places and do all of that. It just works, which is actually a really, really nice way to do it. UV also has a really nice way of working with tools in such a way that you don't even need to specify that you want to install a tool to be able to run it. And you can do that using the uvx command. Uh, and you can just do uvx rough. Well, actually, if I show you, um, if I do uv tree, we'll see that rough is not installed in this project at all. If I were to do uvx rough check dot, it will download and install rough. I think I already had it installed in the cache but it will, it will download and install rough into its own environment somewhere and it will run the checks and it's not persistent. If I just do this again on one that I haven't tested with, so I sort is one. You could do UVX I sort, you see it installs the package and then I sort is saying it skipped three files, but it runs it without, well, it, it does install it, but you wouldn't have to have told it that beforehand. And afterwards, it's still not installed anywhere in your environment. UV also has commands for building and publishing packages. I'm not going to show that off here. I just wanted to mention it. Uh, but yeah, that's cool as well. So that was a lot all in one go. Uh, we're now going to go over some benchmarks. The first one I want to do is the PyEnv benchmark, as I said before. I actually don't remember. Is the, is the time around here somewhere? Yeah, we go. 1.875 seconds is what I did it in before. If we were to do the same thing in PyEnv, so PyEnv install 3.12, 3.13, and then PyEnv actually has a different way of installing uh, development versions. It won't work if I just do 3.14. I'd either have to do 3.14-dev, which clones and builds from scratch, or you have to specify the proper version or the, the specific version, which I'm going to do in this case just to make the test a bit more fair. And then we're going to install those and see how long it takes. I've realized at this point in the running of it that I haven't used the time command, which is unfortunate, but it's going to take long enough that Starship will tell us how long it took anyway. <laughs> oh, the new Wallace and Gromit movie just won a BAFTA. Nice. Oh, we got one. We've got one installed. That was, that was a few minutes. Oh, I really should have not done three versions, should I? <laughs> well, here was an interesting thing I saw just before I started recording this. If you're a big fan of The Sims, there was a, a leak of all the design documents for the original Sims. Very interesting. I can probably, I'm reading it right now and I can probably get through it by the time this is done. I'm just gonna go get a drink. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm back. And there we go. We've installed everything in seven minutes and 23 seconds. And I was a bit mean to buy him doing all that uh, distraction stuff, but it just proves how much faster UV is in this. And that's because UV is downloading and installing pre-compiled binaries, whereas PyEnv is installing and building from source, which is a lot slower. You know, Python can only build itself so quickly. So that's where the performance difference is coming from. But in this situation, UV was over 200 times faster, um, which is 
Nothing to be laughed at. Our second benchmark is going to be comparing poetry versus UV for dependency installation speeds. We have poetry on the left and we have UV over here on the right. And we are going to be installing all these dependencies that you see here. Now these are taken from a project that I've done. It's actually a very similar series of dependencies from the ones that we used before. As you can see, poetry is resolving the dependencies and this takes a little while typically um, it's done quicker than I actually remember it. It took 10 seconds there. I remember poetry used to be a lot slower than that, but they seem to have done a lot of work with that. If we then do the same thing with UV, so we use UV sync with the no cache, and we're doing also no cache just so uh, nothing gets in the way. We can see that UV is a lot faster at three seconds instead of 10 seconds. For the record, if we do the same test with pip, install everything with no cache, it completes, it does all this, and it finishes in a grand total of, I'm having to stall because it's taking a little while here, 14 seconds, there you go. So it's a little bit slower than poetry, significantly slower than UV. So there are some extra things that I wanna talk about UV before we end the video. The first is that there's no build system available in it at the moment, but it does use Hatchling by default which I think is the best one anyway. Maybe there'll be one in the future, I'm not really too sure, but that is something it doesn't have. So it's not quite as powerful as Hatch, which does have literally everything. It also doesn't have sessions or pipelines, which is a bit of a weird thing to say, but I'm only bringing that up because a lot of people in the comments on my Nox video said that UV made Nox redundant. You know, it's, why would you use uh, Nox instead of UV? And the answer I would give them is because it has sessions. <laughs> I w I'm not saying that UV needs sessions. I think the two can coexist just fine. Um, but that is, I guess, something worth keeping in mind if you like having a little bit more automation. Is it worth upgrading? Well, have you seen the thumbnail? <laughs> uh, yes, I do very much think it is. It is significantly faster than everything else going in basically every way. It's built for speed. There's so much it can do. It is the jack of all trades and frankly the master of them all too i think um if you are struggling with uh, migrating away from maybe just like paper requirements or txt or even a poetry configuration there is a third party tool called uv migrator i'm not going to look at it now um and it is third party so do keep that in mind but that should help you move over to uv let me know in the comments if you're planning to switch to UV or if you have already switched, let me know what you think of it. I'd be really interested to hear your opinions. If you want to hear about all the other ways that you can perfect your Python development experience, I have a playlist called Perfect Python, which is in the end cast for you to watch. And I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.